It's now beyond any doubt. All the signs show Africa is surging ahead with positive economic growth and macroeconomic development across the continent. New funds are flowing, there's innovative financing, but instability and persistent security problems could impact on this economic progress. So how can we maximize Africa's potential while grappling with its security issues? That's the question we put to economic and political leaders gathered here in Libreville in Gabon for the third edition of the New York Forum Africa. Some 20 years after the genocide, Rwanda is a symbol of economic success. According to the African Center for Economic Transformation, it's among the top 10 countries whose gross domestic product grew the fastest between 2000 and 2010. Violence and insecurity have given way to economic development. We believe very much that uh, security, ensuring uh, good governance is extremely important as we develop the, the continent of Africa, because that's the experience we have in Rwanda. But we also believe that um, Africa should not be seen as a block, whether it's security or no security, because the pockets that are not secure or have challenges to deal with, but there are also very many places in Africa that are very secure and that are ready you know, to take advantage of the, the economic development opportunities that are there. And that said, again, even for those countries that are facing challenges of insecurity, you cannot say, let us first wait and address this challenge completely before we develop. I think they can be done uh, simultaneously. Average growth across the continent was just under 5% in 2014 and is projected to touch 6% next year. It's a testament to Africa's resistance to the turbulence caused by the conflicts that still afflict the continent. We can't say that security is a precondition, because if we make preconditions, we won't develop anymore. But it is an important element. It's important because we place confidence in the authorities that govern us, and it falls to the government to put in place the necessary security to guarantee stability for investors like us. Because as industrialists, as financiers, we don't have the means or the mechanisms to ensure the security of all our economic interests. Nigeria is a case in point, an African and indeed global economic powerhouse. Yet it struggles with severe security problems as we've seen all too recently. A lot of the threats that we're experiencing in Africa are threats that are not only threats to Africa, but they're threats to stability around the world. You have a bizarre situation. African governments are told by Western governments that they need to prepare themselves to deal with security issues, yet the IMF and the World Bank refuse to allow governments to use their budgets to, to fund the equipment, the resources, the training that are needed to deal with these issues. I, I don't have faith in my, the Nigerian government to resolve the issue, but I have faith that the world has seen that there's a problem in Africa. The world meaning the developed countries who have the capacity and the capability to be able to fight terrorism like they've done in the past. So because of that reason, I have more faith because the world is now watching. If, if this continues, then the number of female entrepreneurs like myself in Nigeria will reduce because they will not have the opportunities that I have had to be able to grow my business to this extent. We have to work to reinforce their security because their security is our security. It's so close to us. Terrorist groups in one country can easily cross borders and end up in Europe. Against this backdrop, the Bank of African Development has called for greater engagement from the international community to resolve Africa's conflicts. For one Senegalese singer and politician, the answer may lie closer to home. We should wash our dirty linen at home. We should also have more meetings in Africa. It's not just in Europe where we should decide things. Symbolically, that would show people here that the solutions, or at least the discussions, stem from Africa.